Hey, what's up, the guys? Brad here. So today we're talking about Master of Chaos, the brand new structure deck. It's coming out on the 26th of September, and we know nothing of it. We know nothing that is going to be coming in this deck, apart from Magician of Chaos and most likely Chaos Form, two very powerful cards, two very good cards as well. And beyond that, we kind of know the deck will have some synergy with the Dark Magician, and that that, that the Chaos Form, Magician of Chaos, kind of counts for that by itself. So there could be no other new Dark Magician support cards in this deck whatsoever. So today we're going to talk about three different options the deck could have and some cards I think could come with the deck and let me know what you think down below, what you'd like to see come to the deck and what you think will come with the deck because those again are two very different questions and they two, both have two very different answers. So uh, yeah, but before we do, I need to point out this leak because people on Reddit and Discord are kind of running with it and saying, oh, this is confirmed, this is real. It's not, it's fake. Someone photoshopped it. They did a poor job of doing so. Um, there's some definite errors in there, like the card, the card colors being different. Um, uh, the chaos has the wrong level. There's just a ton of inconsistencies that make it completely not real. So, uh, don't worry about that. However, the guy that did do this does have some good points for cards that could come to it with the deck. So I do agree with him on some things there, but let's go in with it. Start off with the good old dark magician support. So first up, let's focus on pure dark magician because that's the biggest one. I feel like everyone by now knows that what you need for dark magician is... Eternal Soul, Dark Magical Circle, and Apprentice Illusion Magician. Those are three very powerful cards, and I don't think we're going to get all three of them. I think we'll get one of them at max, and I feel like the prime candidate is Eternal Soul, just because it does have that defect of when it's removed from the field, you then nuke your entire monster board, which is going to be a very high risk, high reward kind of thing, because otherwise, you do get the special Dark Magician from your hand or graveyard every turn, or search out for a Dark Magic Attack or a... A thousand knives which means you don't have to waste your magician's rod to do that so it does create a lot of uh, advantage for the damage and deck but also puts you in a bit of a risky spot especially if people can be running lots of cosmic cyclones which people are doing now for ancient gears but if this becomes a meta deck which the ex decks do become they'll be running cosmic cyclone a lot so just one thing you do need to watch out for with playing that card and the other two cards circle and illusion magician I feel like it's just way too strong for Duel Links right now. Circle, of course, it, you know, you, when you play it, look at the top three cards of your deck, and then you get to choose a Dark Magician card in them, add it to your hand, and then put the rest of the cards in your deck in order. And then every time you summon a Dark Magician, once per turn, you get to banish a card your opponent controls. So with Eternal Soul, that then creates a bit of a nice little combo, of course, in Duel Links. Right now, we only have like Navigation and Ancient Rules to summon him out. So some always summon Dark Magician out would be quite beneficial, but. If we got Eternal Soul and Circle, I think that's a bit too much. Either one or the other, I feel like is the, the, the nice golden ratio there. But still, uh, Circle also kind of combos really well with the Magician of Chaos, the actual ritual monster in this deck. Because it counts as Dark Magician, so when it's summoned, you get to banish the card. And then Magician of Chaos effect will activate when a spell or trap card effect is activated. And you then get to pop another card in your own control. So that works out quite nicely there. And of course, we have a Prince Luton Magician, which uh, is your hand trap, your battle trap for the deck. And... Either she can discard a card to special summon herself out, so that puts a Dark Magician in the graveyard, or a um, Magician's Rod in the graveyard to get its effect off. When she's summoned, she searches out for a Dark Magician, so then sets you up for your Eternal Soul, your Navigation, real nice there. And then during the battle phase, if a Dark Spell casts your Control attacks, you contribute her or discard her from your hand to have you gain 2,000 attack points. So that can be pretty powerful. We've always seen a card like Duel Links in Bajingi Crane that works very well for that deck, but... This is a bit more generic and with Dark Magician it's a bit more impactful just because the Bujins can't get too high but with Dark Magician that's like a 4500 attack point monster on board and that could be an OTK if you really need it to be. However, depending on what we got, I feel like the Dark Magician mirror match would be pretty fun to play around with. Just people popping things back and forth, back and forward and there's like not really a huge um, disadvantage to you the player that's popping it because obviously if you play Ancient Gears then if you pop one of their cards they get out a reactor dragon or something but if if you pop an opponent's card you know if it's a dark magician card if it's internal soul their board is nuked so i personally feel like eternal soul is the number one target and then it's like interchangeable between uh getting circle or a uh, soul if we do kind of uh, go down that route so moving away from the pure dark magician into the other kind of uh categories i had now, one thing to consider is that EX decks have a certain ratio of reprints and new cards. Now, of the five EX decks we've had, the average is three reprints, three high rarity reprints, or three super and above reprints, 
add five new cards. Obviously, there are decks that do more than this, like the Ancient Gear one had nine new cards, whereas the uh, the uh, Spellbound Silence, the Silent Magician one, had two new cards. So there's definitely a range they can do for what they want to give us. But the average is five new cards. That means there's three new cards missing. And we can talk about option two, which is focusing on Dark Magician of Chaos. Yeah, we're going to go down that route. So reprints, I think it's pretty safe to say that Dark Magician of Chaos, Legion of the Fiend Jester, and Magician Circle, those will be prime targets to be reprinted in this deck, like that fake leak had with Legion and Circle. I think that's a very, very good shout. That's what I kind of uh, envisioned before that post got posted online. That makes a lot of sense to me. Now, given it's a ritual deck, maybe that means we'll get a ritual support card reprinted, maybe something like a Sonic Bird or a Senju, one of those two is an Ultra Rare. That'd be, that'd be really cool if they did that, actually, uh, make it a bit more easier to get. But those two are in selection box, I believe, and they'll probably bring those back with the DSD world, so there might not be too much of a reason to actually reprint them. So, uh, there's like there's my there's my thoughts on reprints. Now to the new cards. So, to go along with our Dimension of Chaos, we have Chaos Set to Blast, a quick play spell card. If you control a level 8 or higher spellcaster monster, banish one card on the field face down. So it works very similarly to Dark Magical Circle, but only when you have a level 8 on the field. So your level 7 Magician of Chaos, it won't work with, but your Dark Magician of Chaos and your Magician of Black Chaos, which will be the ritual card you can summon out when it's destroyed, it will work with those. Then if this card in its own spell trap was almost destroyed by the first card effect, you can special either Magician of Black Chaos or Demok from your deck ignoring summoning conditions. So that's just amazing because then... Demok will get special effect in the end phase to add a spell card from your graveyard to your hand. So it kind of combos off really well and definitely depending on what, like if your opponent knows you're playing Dark Magician, if you just tech this into the deck, then they might think it's an eternal soul, they destroy it, you get out a Demok, and then you have a big monster on board, and then you can potentially recycle this card back to your hand with Demok's effect. So you can kind of see a little strategy there going with this card. The other two cards I kind of chose for this were two Dark Side Dimensions cards, and the reason is because there wasn't much, you know, uh, Dark Magician support in the movie, but there was some very nice generic spellcaster support, so I thought, why not put these two in? The first up is a card I talked about before, Dark Magic Veil, pay a thousand life points special one dark spellcaster from your hand or graveyard. It's an ancient rules, but better. That's that's basically how I'm looking at it. It's a much better ancient rules. You need to go for your Dark Magicians, your Demox, your uh, Magician of Dark Illusion, if you, need a, if you need a rod on the field for some reason, maybe you want to get a rod out, uh, but... It's a card that we'll see play outside of Dark Magician deck as well, but it's still a very, very nice little card and one I do want to see come to Duel Links. The other one is Dark Horizon. This one works during the battle. It's a trap card. When you take effect or battle damage, special a dark spellcaster from your deck with attack less than or equal to the damage you took. So if you take 2500, there's your Dark Magician out. If you take a big Desperado Battle Dragon to the face of 28, that's in a Dark Magician of Chaos out from your field deck onto your field. So that's a very, very easy way of getting him on board, which is pretty insane. And Dark Horizon, again, it's one of those cards I feel like won't be used too much, but it would be really cool if we were to get it and we're actually able to play around with it. It would be really fun. And one other card I thought of was Black Illusion. This card came out way back in uh, Yuka Zero decks, like 2016, I think it was. Until the end of this turn, all Dark Spellcasts and monsters you control with 2,000 more attack can't be destroyed by battle, their effects negated, and they're unaffected by your opponent's card effects. So it's a blanket kind of protection from your opponent's cards, which is really, really nice. It gives you a one extra turn to survive, and then on your next turn, you can potentially then draw into like a dark magic attack or uh, a thousand knives. Go in, try and get some uh, some some pops on and stuff. So really, it's giving you one last chance. I think it's a really fun card, a really cool card, and definitely one that because the deck will focus around getting dark magician on board so easily, you'll be fine to run one or two of these in your deck if you really want to. So I quite like Black Illusion and. You'll notice there's no real monsters in here because I couldn't think of a monster card. There wasn't really any monsters for Dark Magician that we haven't got already. The only other things that would be kind of beneficial is something like Armageddon Knight, which they won't give us, they will not give us that at all. But Armageddon Knight will just let you put Dark Magician in the graveyard or put a uh, rod in the graveyard, just setting up for more plays for your Chaos form or for Rod's effect to then trigger your card in the field, put it back to the hands, so and you get a search off when you summon it next turn. A lot of synergy with that card with Dark Magician, but that'd be pretty fun if we did get something like that, but I don't think we will. Maybe there'll be something like Apprentice Magician, because that, I believe, isn't in Duel Links yet, like the OG level 2. Uh, that's in the Speed Duel set, and that's actually a really fun card to play in Speed Duels, but it's not in Duel Links just yet, so maybe that'll be one of the new uh, the new monster cards they give us into uh, into the game as well. So that's where I'm kind of sitting on the Dark Magician of Chaos kind of thing. Uh, not really focusing too much on the Chaos thing, but really that generic spell caster support. 
And now let's move on to the other stuff, which is the BLS stuff, because I feel like this is the one side that won't happen. But if it did, it'd be really cool because BLS has some really cool cards that we haven't got yet. Some ritual cards. And the thing that complicates this is that BLS is entwined with the Gaia deck, the Gaia archetype. And this Magician of Chaos is entwined with BLS as well. So it just kind of makes that whole deck really convoluted. And there's one ritual monster we don't have. Uh, there's Super Soldier, I think it is. And he burns. He does some burn damage, so I don't think they'll give us that. There's also uh, Magician of Black Chaos Max, which I should have talked about earlier, which uh, is a Kazuka Takashi art card. I think if we were to get that, that'd be pretty cool, but I personally don't see us, we, us getting that just because it's a Kaz art card, and we've not got any of them just yet, so maybe we'll get it, maybe not, I don't think so, but there's two monsters that support BLS, and of course this would mean if we go in the BLS route that you'd get the OG Ultra Rare Black Soldier reprinted, and we get something like Gateway to Chaos reprinted because that does help bring that card out. There's Evening, Twilight Night, and Beginning Night. These work like the Vendred monsters. If you know what that does when you use their monster for a ritual summon, it gets the effect of banish a card on the field once per turn, and this works in a very similar way. So in the case of Evening, Twilight Night, a BLS ritual monster summoned using this card can gain these effects. Once per turn, you can type one monster your opponent controls and banish it, so that's like your Vendred kind of card. And once per turn, you can banish one random card from your opponent's hand face down into your opponent's next end phase. So this puts a card out of commission for two whole of your opponent's turns, basically. Unless it's like a Sphere Creeper and they can use it during your next turn, it just puts a card out of commission, which is really, really nice. Then, if this is banished from the graveyard, you could add one Ritual Monster from your deck to your hand. Any Ritual Monster, by the way, that works really well with uh, some of the BLS support we had from the Card Trader, which these two would be quite nice. And these two have actually been in the game files for like a year now. So, they could come at any point in time. The other one being Beginning Night, again, very, very similar. Again, a BLS monster gains these effects. Once per turn, you can target a monster your opponent controls and banish it. And when this monster destroys the opponent's card by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can activate this effect to make it attack a second time in a row, mimicking Black Cluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. That is a really, really fun, uh, really fun strategy there. And again, if it's banished from the graveyard, you can then search out for a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. So, uh, Evening Twilight, search out for a monster. Beginning Night, search out for a spell. The whole deck synergizes around there. You could go look for your Magician of Chaos, your Chaos form. And that's why I see that kind of coming into play. I'll go for your BLS kind of stuff. Really, this deck is very hard to predict. It's one that I've struggled to kind of think, what could really come to Duel Links with this deck? Because there's just too much. There's too much that could come. And I really hope that whatever we get is going to be really good. And if it is like some BLS support, if it's kind of like a mix of everything, then maybe that means that at some point in a future main box or mini box, we'll get more BLS support, more ritual support. Because if you didn't know, Advanced Ritual Art, its rarity was changed from like a rare to an ultra rare in two updates ago. So given the ritual support of this box, does that mean that in the next mini box or main box, we'll get Advanced Ritual Art as a ultra rare, which would really, really help out this deck and really, really help out a potential Blue Eyes Chaos Max deck in the near future. Again, let me know what you think down below. I apologize for this video being a bit uh, rushed or all over the place and not making too much sense at times. Uh, my internet is currently down, so I uh, it's a bit of a pain to even edit this video and get all the things done for it and get it up for you guys. So uh, hope you guys enjoy regardless. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next Dawlings video. See you then.